The Fletcher-class destroyers were a groundbreaking leap in naval engineering and perfectly tailored for the demanding nature of the Pacific War. Designed with unmatched firepower, advanced radar integration, and enhanced survivability, these ships set a new standard for U.S. Navy destroyers. In the desperate early days of the Pacific War, U.S. destroyers faced enemy ships that lurked in the darkness and waves of aircraft that rained down bombs from above. Older destroyers could not effectively counter both threats as their main guns were optimized for only surface engagement. The Fletcher-class destroyers changed this with the standardized dual-purpose 5-inch 38 guns as their primary battery that could switch seamlessly between a surface brawl and effective air defense. These guns provided unmatched versatility to smash surface targets, fire star shells, and provide high-elevation anti-aircraft fire up to 85 degrees. A well-trained Fletcher gun crew could unleash a sustained rate of fire of 15 to 22 rounds per minute for each barrel. With a 55-pound shell and 2,500 feet per second muzzle velocity, the 5-inch 38 had enough surface combat punch to hurt even heavy cruisers in a running battle. While earlier destroyers relied on lookouts and outdated optical rangefinders, the Fletcher class were the first U.S. destroyers designed from the keel up to carry radar as a standard integral system rather than as an improvisation added mid-war. Their SG surface search radar could spot ships up to 15 to 20 miles away depending on sea conditions and weather. This was a massive leap over predecessors, giving Fletcher destroyers in a scouting ability once reserved for larger cruisers. It allowed them to accurately fire in darkness, bad weather, and against fast-moving aircraft. Earlier U.S. Navy destroyers had wide firepower gap between the long-range 5-inch guns and the lightweight 20mm Ehrlichons. The Fletcher class closed this gap by being the first U.S. destroyer class designed from the start to carry multiple 40mm Beaufort mounts. The standard layout of five twin 40mm mounts, or 10 barrels total, provided a dense and vastly superior mid-range AA coverage compared to earlier destroyers. The sheer rate of fire of 120 rounds per minute for each barrel proved decisive against incoming aircraft, especially the kamikazes in the final years of the war. As the war intensified, many Fletchers were upgraded to carry four twin and two quad mounts, raising the total to 14 40mm Beaufort barrels. Even with multi-layered defense, a destroyer was still a small and fragile vessel. A torpedo hit or a well-placed bomb could ignite a blaze, rupture a bulkhead, or flood a compartment causing a chain reaction that would send the whole ship to the bottom in minutes. The lessons from early war disasters, such as the catastrophic loss of USS Sims, proved that the lack of comprehensive damage control was a fatal design flaw. The Fletcher-class destroyers were the first to break this mold with survivability as a core and non-negotiable principle. The hull was divided into multiple watertight compartments, with key machinery like turbines and generators split into separate redundant spaces, allowing a ship to take a crippling blow and still fight on. They also carried modern fire suppression equipment as a standard feature, including CO2 systems and foam sprayers. Many Fletcher destroyers were able to return to the mainland for repair after suffering damage that would have almost certainly been catastrophic for earlier destroyers. The Mark 37 Fire Control Director was available on every Fletcher destroyer as standard equipment, rather than as a selective or experimental fit. Its revolutionary analog computer was tied directly to rangefinding. It took the guesswork out of combat by continuously calculating lead angles and shell trajectories with inhuman speed and precision. The full integration of 5-inch guns, radar, and Mark 37 computers turned the Fletcher into one of the first true system ships in World War II. With this capability, Fletches could hit fast-moving fighters and torpedo planes even when Japanese pilots tried low-level approaches. They could also effectively engage small targets like enemy destroyers at ranges over 10,000 yards during darkness. The war was a relentless arms race, and a destroyer, no matter how advanced, could risk being a one-generation weapon if not designed properly. The Fletcher designers anticipated this and added a built-in growth margin. This was not just extra space, but a conscious decision to leave a reserve of displacement, electrical power, and flexible deck space for future upgrades. It meant that as the kamikaze threat emerged, Fletchers could seamlessly add more 40mm Beauforts and 20mm Ehrlichons without being crippled by the top weight and instability issues. After the war, its basic radar systems could be upgraded to more advanced air search sets, and new anti-submarine capabilities can be added as the threat evolved. 
This design flexibility made the Fletcher not just versatile ships for World War II, but also for the prolonged Cold War. After years of fighting in the most brutal naval campaign in naval history, the Fletcher's true legacy was in its persistent utility. During the Cold War, many were not immediately scrapped and forgotten, but rather converted into minesweepers, radar pickets, and anti-submarine escorts, serving for decades in a world that had moved on to another form of global conflict. Thank you for watching and see you in our next videos.